important to comprehend anything mentioned in the Quran is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we read it it gets effect on us we hear about in Surah Yusuf anybody know about Surah Yusuf chapter about Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam Ibrahim alayhi salam had first son Ismail alayhi salam second son Ishaq alayhi salam he had a son Yaqub alayhi salam and he had a son Yusuf alayhi salam right and we hear all the details about the stories. And when we hear about them, there was a character of Zulaikha, a lady. There was a mention of the king of Egypt. And there were people, 11 of his brothers, among them 10 of the brothers were not good people with them. They did not treat him right. They were their brothers. And we just heard, we need to treat our family nicely. Did we hear it? The Imam was just talking about, you should take care of your brothers and sisters. You should love them, even though they are not nice to you, you should be nice to them. So, but in Quran, we hear about the details of the stories of the families of the Prophet, and we say, Subhanallah, what a beautiful story. But when we have a gathering about Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu and we have the gathering about the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some ignorant people who do not comprehend the honor of the family and the Prophet himself, they say this is not being practiced by this and that and they try to reason it. Now let me read Quran. What do we get when we come to this gathering? And I'm going to refer from the Quran, Surah Hud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter Surah Hud, chapter Hud and verse number 120. What's the verse number? 120. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will read in only English just because you guys will have time restraint. Allah says, and all that we relate to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the news of the messengers of the, in the order, is in the order that we make a strong and firm your heart thereby. And in this chapter of the Quran has come to you the truth, as well as an admonition and reminder for the believers. Now, do we understand that? I hope, I don't think you guys get it. Allah says, Allah is turning to Prophet, but Prophet's Iman is there. Right? Prophet's heart is not weak, but this is for us to understand through the tongue of Prophet ﷺ, a message coming from Allah through the Messenger ﷺ for us. So these stories of the Prophets are being told so that our heart will become strengthened. And to you have come this zikr, the Quran of the truth, and a wise advice for you, and a remembrance for the believers. So if you hear the stories of the Prophets, your Iman becomes strong, your faith becomes firm. So if somebody says, oh, Sahaba didn't do this, Sahaba didn't do that, but the Quran says you should listen and do it. Because Sahaba went, were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa day and night, and they were there, they saw him. But we did not see him. So as the story of the previous prophets and their families, the stories were narrated by Rasulullah because those prophets were not there. So we learn about them through the Quran. It's not somebody that making up the story. And the next verse is even more affirming and more educating to us in Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 111. What number is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which means, indeed, in their stories, there is a lesson for men of understanding. In the Quran is in, in, in the Quran is not a forged statement, but a confirmation of Allah's existing book, which was before it which means Torah and Gospel, the Gospel which was given to Jesus and Torah was given to Moses and other scriptures of Allah and detailed explanation of everything and a guide and mercy for the people who believe. 
So when we hear the story about prophets of previous time, when we gather, when we're leaving our homes to come to this place today, Allah starts sending his mercy upon her. When we came in this place, we got more and more mercy upon of us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what we are doing, we are talking about greatest of the greatest miracle happened in the history of humanity of ever existence that the Prophet was taken in a portion of night from Mecca to Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is Bayt Al-Muqaddas, which was known as Ilya, which was you known as Jerusalem in Aramaic language or Hebrew. The Jerusalem means Jerusalem. In Arabic, Salam means peace. In Hebrew, Shalom means peace. Yero is the city. So the Roman, when they invaded, they destroyed the city and they turned the name into Ilya. And at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was known as Ilya. So one of the Sahabi, the companion, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to go to Ilya to perform Salah. He said, do you have any other reason? He said, no, because to get the blessing. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said many hadiths, but this is very interesting hadith you might have heard. The scholars know about it. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, if you make Salah in Masjid al Nabawi, in my Masjid, you will get thousand time multiplication of the reward which you will get in Masjid al Ilya, which is Masjid al Aqsa. We know that we get 100,000 blessing if you make two rakah salah in Masjid al-Haram, Kaaba, 50,000 in Masjid al-Nabawi, and 1,000 or 5,000 in Masjid al-Aqsa. But multiplied, at least 8,000, multiplied by 1,000 to pray to the Masjid al-Nabawi. So we are told by the hadith of Rasulullah, we should visit Masjid al-Nabawi and make salah there because it will be more than Masjid al-Haram. Somebody will get upset. Don't worry. That's what Prophet says. I go by the Prophet. No, people talk about their people, right? People feel joy about talking their own. So if I talk about my father, my family, my loved ones, my country, people take pride and honor. Oh, I am Pakistani. I'm American, right? We don't celebrate our prophet. If we do maulid, people say prophet did not celebrate it, maulid. Quran is talking about maulid and you have a problem with the maulid. If the Miraj, who was the prophet who ever went to the Sidrat al-Muntaha and he heard further to the Iraj where he heard the Qalam, the pen is writing and he could hear the voice of the pen. And when he was returning back, Musa alayhi salam said, Irji'i ila rabbik. Farji'i ila rabbik. People say it was Jibreel he saw. Okay, Jibreel he saw, then where's the Rabb? Who was giving him the 50,000 salah? and reducing them to five, and giving the reward of 50 for five. Quran, Hadith says, You are fighting over what he saw? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and Hadith says, Sahabi asked him, Ya Rasulullah, he even Sahabi asked, a Tabi asked a Sahabi, that did the Prophet see Allah? Did you ever ask him? He said, yes, I did ask. So he replied, I saw Noor. A Kabir Sahaba, Abu Bakr, Omar, Osman, Ali, Abdullah ibn Abbas, all the Kabirin Sahaba believed it, that Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How he saw, what he saw, because there was no third party, we cannot describe. We believe it, because we believe Jibreel bring the revelation of the Quran every day. So we should believe in it. There's no, it's not a matter of discussion. Our Prophet saw Allah, he said he saw, we believe in it. Quran says he saw, we believe in it. Umm al in Aisha has a little different opinion. And her father Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he came to her, he asked her, is that what you say that the Prophet did not see Allah? She said, yes, I think so. He said, Quran was revealed upon you or Prophet Muhammad. But she had this thing and the story is there, the Muslim do not change this story. The truth is, whatever she said is known, whatever he said is known, and what we understand is, okay, if you don't want to believe that Allah, Prophet saw Allah, that's fine, but that doesn't make you kafir. As long as a person believes in the Mi'raj, Mi'raj is one of the greatest miracles for humanity, that even Jibreel says, that if I go beyond certain point, I will be burned with the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Mi'raj, is a very important event. Why? There is such so much to talk about. I just cannot go in every little detail. But the fact is, it's a message for us. Prophet had a four times his open heart was done. Do you know that? Four times? 
some scholar says four times, some says three times. Anyhow, first time was when he was six years, about like six years old. Jibril Islam came, opened his chest and cleaned it, put the noor in it. Second time he was about 10 years age, according to some scholars. Third time when he was given the Quran, first time Quran was revealed according to some Allah. But this one, Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala described me, he saw a scar on his chest. And they opened up his heart, chest and opened his heart and cleaned it with the zamzam water. Now, if you take somebody's heart out, do you think person is living? You believe in that hadith, right? But you have a problem with Rasulullah going to Mirage. Where is Isa al-Islam right now? Anybody knows? In the heavens. In the heavens. Sky number two. Sky number two. Is he living? So if he can live on the second sky, why our my prophet cannot go to Siddhartha al-Muntaha and about the Arsh of Allah, if Allah wills so. So we believe in that part, but we do not believe Muhammad Rasulullah went to Mirage. 2000 year old Isa is sitting there. Every Muslim believes that. But nobody questioned it. But when it comes to Rasulullah's Mirage, people have a question. What kind of Iman is that? When Allah said, Salamun ala Ibrahim wa Salamun ala Musa wa Isa, everybody. It is not a bad thing, but when we say, Salatu wa Salam alayka ya Rasulullah, people say, oh, this is bid'ah. What is your problem with us sending salawat upon Rasulullah? And if I say, Ya Rasulullah, Salatu wa Salam alayka, Ya Habib Allah, and Rasulullah replies, Wa alaykum wa salam, Shahid Faruq ibn Wasi Ahmad Faruq ibn Nazir Ahmad Faruq. Subhanallah, my day is there. Why should I listen to you? Are you a prophet? Did you have a hadith or revelation that you cannot send salat upon Rasulullah? And when you sit in the salah, say, Assalamu alaykum, ayyuhan nabiyu. That does not become a null and void salah, that becomes accepted salah. And then we say, those who say that Rasulullah did not talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then where he was going, Erjay ila Rabbik, return back to your Lord. And he says, Ya Allah, my ummah is weak. Can you reduce them? And Musa alayhi salam, who is already dead 2,000 years or 4,000 years before this mi'raj happened, is advising Rasulullah. Sahabi Qabr is helping the living prophet, advising him what to do for his ummah. And Ibrahim alayhi salam said to him what? Say salam to your ummah. If Ibrahim alayhi salam 6,000 years passed away, turning salam to the ummah of Rasulullah, so I would say, wa alaikum as salam ya Ibrahim alayhi salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We don't think about these things. Why do we not think? Because we have been made to belittle our prophet. There's a somebody who does not want to mention, like in Pakistan, you cannot say nowadays Imran Khan, right? If you say Imran Khan, some people get very upset. They shut down your TV, they shut down your home, right? If you say Muhammad Rasulullah, so some dunya people, the worldly people, do not want to hear Muhammad Rasulullah. They would do every little effort to attack his personality and being. Among them, the bearded, praying with a scar on their head, they are the ones who are bigger nuisance than my problem with those than the one who do not believe in him. So we need to bring everybody into our gathering and feel the blessing if the prophets who were previous to Rasulullah can get the honor and give us mercy of Allah when we talk about them. Right? Musa al -Islam was not our prophet. He was a prophet of the Israel. Isa al -Islam was not our prophet. We believe in him. Ibrahim al -Islam, but he said a salam, subhanallah. But when the Imam al-Anbiya, Sayyid al-Mursaleen, Rahmat al-Alameen, Khatim al-Nabi'een, Shafi al muznibin when his zikr is coming, how much mercy and blessing we will get? So do we understand that what we are missing here? You know, when, you, when the government have a sale, when a government have sale, you go there and get the free food, right? But you have to go someplace to get the food. Food doesn't come to home, right? You go to the big mall, big stores, even if you buy. What are masajid? Biyutullahi fil ardi masajid. And when this community leaders are inviting us to come and get the blessing, we say, no, we don't want your blessing. And the blessing from who? The zikr of the most beloved of Allah. 
There was never more beloved of Allah than the Muhammad Rasulullah. Now we hear the qissa of all the prophets and their family as we hear the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. Right? When we talk about the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah some people start pointing, oh, you're talking about Imam Hussein. You're talking about Fatima. You're talking about Ali. You're talking about Usman. You're talking about Abu Bakr. They were all related to Rasulullah. All four, four Khalifa, they are related. Two of them were Susur or the father-in-laws. Two of them were the son-in-laws. That's the relation with Rasul. And they were the promised people. Now people say, oh, make wasila of your salah, your Quran, your sadqat, your salat, your siyam, your all things. Now anybody in the world can guarantee my sadqa, my salah, my siyam is accepted or not? But can anybody say that Ali and Fatima, Hassan, Hussein, and Abu Bakr, and Usman, and Ali, they are, uh, they are not accepted? If we use them as our reference of wasila with the Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is there a doubt about them, their acceptance? So we should understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Follow these people, love them. And nobody will enter the Jannah if he disgraces his parents in the world. Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu who dishonor his parents or disrespected, not dishonored, disrespected. That person will get disgrace in the life and in the hereafter in the grave will never have a blessing. And he will not enter the Jannah. So, if you look at your father's face in the morning and you smile, you know how much reward is? One Hajj. One Hajj, nothing, makbul. You spend money to go for Hajj, no guarantee it will be accepted. But when you look at your dad's face and you smile, you will get a reward of one Hajj. So the companions, may Allah bless them. The Sahabi says, Ya Rasulullah, if we keep smiling, how many reward we get? Nabi Sallallahu said, Allah has no limit in his trade. As many times you smile your daddy, you will get it. And the companion came, he says, Ya Rasulullah, if I want to go to the paradise, you know, what we want from this gathering? We want paradise. What we want from this gathering? A mercy. What we get after this? A barakah. Increment in our blessings. So when companion asked, Ya Rasulullah, if I want to get in the paradise, what should I do? He said, serve your mother under the feet of your mother. Second time, you feed of your mother. Third time, feed of your mother. Then the fourth time, he said, Father. And he said, if they are not living, he said, find their brothers, sisters, and parents. Take care of them. Their family. If you have no family, then their friends. Abdullah ibn Umar would go to two days of journey in those days to visit a friend of his father, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. They were asking, why do you visit him? He was your dad's friend. He says, but that's what Prophet taught us. So we should take care of each other. Muslims are supposed to be taking care of Muslims. salam, fi Prophet the first word he said, which we just heard, Abdullah ibn Salam heard, he was a Jewish rabbi. He said, Nabi Sallallahu said, spread the peace, salam. Atamutam, feed the hungry. You know, Quran says salat and zakat together. Why? Salah goes up, zakat goes to the people. Except two places, all Quran talk about Salat and Zakat together. So take care of these, he will take care of you. The one, the heavens, and mostly we are annoyed by each other. You know, if somebody asks you once or twice or three times, help you get irritated. Even our own brothers, sisters, even our own kids. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ask me more and more, I'll give you more. And we take wasila of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our Prophet went from masjid al haram to masjid al aqsa and then he went to the seven heaven, and from there he went to the further third Sidrat al-Muntaha, and after the Sidrat al-Muntaha, he went up to the arsh al and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly gave him the blessing. According to some scholars, six, six months of fasting was prescribed. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi make dua and it was reduced to Ramadan. There are many other things. Three things which is very important for us to remember. You're going to take home this message. First thing Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given 50 salah. Reduced to five, but we get reward of 50. All right. Second reward, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Amana Rasulullah bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi al-mu'minin. Until end, that one should read. 
There's more details about it. Time is limited. The third thing Prophet ﷺ was promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah keep asking. Ask me what you want. What Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, Rabbi habli ummat. Ya Allah, forgive my ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Rasulullah in your ummah who will not commit shirk in the act of worship that do not respect worship anybody other than Allah, with Allah, above Allah, with part of Allah. Allah will forgive that person. These are the three most important gifts Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam was given. And in every salah, time is limited. Should I stop now? Okay. I will stop. He said, cut it. No choice. He just did. Cut it out. <laughs> no, no. His hand was like that, man. <laughs> he did not say time out. He says, cut it out. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> so we'll cut it out. So just remember, when you go home, you're going to look at your daddy and smile. How many are you going to do? I'm, I, my daddy's gone, so I'm going to pray for him. Everybody? You have daddy? Anybody who has a daddy? Raise your hand. This guy is not raising his hand. Your dad is alive? Why don't you raise your hand? No, you are doing this. I want you this. All right. So everybody will see his daddy today and just smile and say, Daddy, I love you. And go to mommy and tell her, Mommy, I love you and thank you for being my mom. Right? When we were young and we didn't have the ability to control our bladder and bowels and she was cleaning us, you know. <laughs> she knows everything about us. There's no secret with mommy. Right? We should say, thank you, mommy. You know what they want? They want nothing. They want to see a smile on our face. And you know, one person who wants you to be ahead of them is your father. Everybody wants you behind them and father wants you to be better than them. So we should make dua for everybody. What we make dua? The Quran teaches us. Rabbi ja'alani muqimat salati wa min dhurriyati. Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Rabbana khfirli wa li walidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumis. This is the comprehensive, most comprehensive dua which was given to us by Islam. We pray for those who are not born yet. And people say you cannot intercede and make reference for others. This is a wasila. Our dua is a wasila for the dead and for the newborn and for the living and the coming till the day of judgment. People are really sick. I don't know how to get them. May Allah make dua for them. May Allah open their heart. Dua for them. Alhamdulillah.